I've got this stack of logs that I'm going to mill into some project wood and I'm going to do it using my 10 inch benchtop bandsaw. I'm also going to make use of this log milling jig that I bought online. Probably also some ad hoc jigs and some ingenuity for some of the larger pieces. These are tree trimmings from my dad's property. They include some honey locust, some pistachio, and some pecan. Can't wait to see what the wood looks like. This sled that I'm using works with any bandsaw with the standard 3 quarter inch miter slot. And although I really like my little benchtop bandsaw in general, one of the things I don't like about it is that it has a 5 8 inch miter slot, not the standard 3 quarter inch. So I'm going to replace the miter bar that came with the sled with a piece of maple that I cut to 5 8 inch wide and a quarter inch thick. And just being careful to get the screw mounting holes exactly in the right spot. And then I use a tap to cut the threads directly into the wood. I'm a little nervous about these threads holding strong enough, so I use some thin CA glue to harden up the wood a bit, and it should be plenty strong enough. And so then after attaching my homemade miter bar to the sled, it's ready to go. I'm starting with one of the smaller pieces of honey locust, first just securing it to the milling sled, and then I cut one edge of the log. And already I'm running into a limitation with my little bandsaw. This knob sticking out doesn't quite fit. So I engage a little bit of help from my chainsaw and then I put it back on the bandsaw to finish the cut. So then I just put that flat side down on the sled to cut another side at 90 degrees from the first cut. And I make that cut, but it really should have taken off a little bit more, so I'm just making a quick adjustment on the sled to make a new cut just a little bit deeper. Now with two sides flat and perpendicular to each other, I just put on my resaw fence. I'm cutting slices that are about an inch and a quarter thick. Just hoping that after it's dried and planed, I'll have some one inch thick pieces to make something with. Some of these logs are a bit larger diameter than the resaw capacity of my bandsaw, so making that first cut to flatten the first side is a little tricky. I'm able to get a side with no bark and make use of the joiner to flatten one side. Then I can go back to the log milling jig to cut the second side perpendicular to the one that I just flattened on the joiner. With my resaw fence back on and set to the same thickness as the previous cut, I'm able to get quite a few good slices out of each one of these logs. I have these longer pieces of honey locust that are about 3 feet long and the log milling sled maxes out just over 20 inches, so I'm going to take a different approach with these. Making use of a straight piece of wood from my scrap bin, I just screw it into the log on each end to create kind of an ad hoc sled for the first cut. After setting up the fence in the short direction, I'm able to make a cut to flatten one side of the log. Then move the straight edge piece of the wood to the side that I just cut and make the second cut perpendicular. I'm not really sure what I'm going to use these for in the future, so I'm going to cut them one and three quarter inches thick, and which I think will give me the most flexibility next year when they're dry and ready to use them for something. 
There is some bug activity in these logs. I'm going to have to heat sterilize them before setting them to start drying. I'll do a separate video on how I kill the bugs with heat. As I'm setting up to cut the pistachio logs, I notice there's a lot of these holes and some signs of termites, like a lot of termites. So I decide not to take the risk of cutting these logs in my wood shop. Bummer, I was really looking forward to getting some pistachio wood. Oh well. So moving on to the pecan logs, they have a pretty thick bark, which I decide to remove first before milling the logs. I've been told if you hit it with a hammer first, it'll loosen it up a bit. I'm not sure, but either way, the bark comes off without too much trouble. These logs are just over 20 inches long and just barely fit on the log milling jig with it set all the way at its longest setting. And just using the same process as before, I cut two sides on the sled to get started on each log. So this sled is pretty handy. A lot of people make their own sleds out of plywood and some sort of a bar clamp, but I think they tend to get a little bulky and clumsy. I really like the simplicity of the design of this jig that comes with the steel backbone, and perhaps it's a bit pricey, but for me it was worth it. I'll leave a link in the description to find it online, and note that this video is not sponsored and I bought this sled with my own money. So I cut the pecan into one and a quarter inch slices and get three good slices out of each log. The last two logs I have to mill are about 10 inches in diameter and even after removing the bark, they're just still way too big for my benchtop bandsaw. So I'm going to need to bring in the big guns for these and I call up Jacques over at JL Schroeder Woodworking to see about making use of his 18 inch bandsaw. They're super friendly and helpful and do amazing custom design, furniture, corbels. They were working on a beautiful fireplace surround and mantle the day I was there. I'll leave a link to their Instagram page if you want to check out some of their work. I'm making use of the same log milling jig that I did on my smaller band side, first flattening one side and then I shift the log 90 degrees and then flatten a second side. And after that I just resaw one slice after another, about one and a quarter inches thick. I was able to get six good slices out of each of these logs, some really gorgeous wood. I'm stoked. Here's all the wood that I got off of my little 10 inch bandsaw after just a few hours of work. I got this from three small logs of pecan, four short logs of honey locust, and four long and skinny logs of honey locust. Just to see how the wood might look when it's finished, I spray a bit of water on a piece of the honey locust and the pecan. Even with just the rough cut from the bandsaw, I can see the potential beauty in the wood grain. I can't wait to make some stuff with this wood. I'm stacking it up for drying just using a spare piece of cedar fencing that I cut into some 3 quarter inch thick pieces. These are referred to as stickers. Hmm, I guess because they're sticks. I'm banding them together with some wire just to reduce the amount of warping as they dry. I'm using the wire bands just to make it easier for me to move the stack around if I want, or I could have just set a weight on top of each stack, either way. So the ends of the boards need to be sealed in order to reduce cracking of the boards as they dry. When I first cut these logs at my dad's house several months ago, I sealed them with some leftover paint at the time, since I knew it would be a while before I'd get around to milling the logs. But I did trim up a few of the logs recently, so I'm just going to go back and seal up those fresh cut ends. Again, just with some leftover paint, randomly a different color than I used before, but it doesn't matter. So these need to sit and dry for about a year. I think a rule of thumb is about a year for every inch of thickness. I live in a pretty dry climate, so it might take a little bit less time than that. So I'm going to check them about once a month with this moisture meter and watch for when the reading hasn't changed much from the last time I checked it, which will tell me that it's about as dry as it's going to get. And the last step before setting them on a shelf to dry is I'm going to heat sterilize them to kill all the bugs. I'm going to do a separate video on that since this video is getting a little long. Thanks so much for watching.